Uh, so I think there's a long, a wide range of things, uh, skills that people need to learn to be successful. Um, I think that can be narrowed down to a couple of categories. And uh, I do think they can be taught in school, but I don't think they can be taught by, by reading a book uh, and listening to lectures. I think that it's a combination of doing what I would call classical and traditional uh, te you know, learning combined with really deep immersive learning. So I'm a, I'm a very, very big fan of this notion of immersive learning, immersive education. And when I look at people that are being successful out of school, a big part of how they grow and develop is through something that is analogous to immersive education. where they are learning by being deeply, deeply immersed in the thing that they're doing and reflecting on it continually rather than just doing it. And so this idea that you're in school, and we can use entrepreneurship as an example because entrepreneurship has become very trendy, again, academically. Let's teach everybody how to be an entrepreneur. There's an age-old discussion about is, are you born an entrepreneur or are you taught to be an entrepreneur? And, and my answer is, is a combination of it's an irrelevant question and yes, of course, both. And you're not taught an entre how to be an entrepreneur by sitting and listening to people lecture about how to be an entrepreneur. You're taught how to be an entrepreneur by going starting up things. And they don't have to be full-fledged companies, but learning how to start things, learning how to go through the process. You learn how to be an entrepreneur by as, you know, if you're in high school and you want, you're interested in entrepreneurship, go work for a startup. And, you know, well, I'm a high school student. I, a startup's not going to hire me. Well, they hire you for free if, you're, if you say, hey, there's a thing about your company I think I can do a really good job on. I want to go work on that. Okay. You know, well, I'll do it for nothing if you let me. Well, we'll pay you something. You don't have to do it for nothing. And then you do it, and you're exposed to lots of other things that are going on around you <laughs> in that company around entrepreneurship. Um, when you think about it in a non-academic sense, uh, programs that, that I've been involved in, things like Techstars, um, which is a 90-day mentor-driven accelerator, is just a very, very intense, immersive learning environment. It's not that you're pretending to be an entrepreneur. You're building your company. But you're doing it in a context where you're surrounded by people who are helping you learn by providing you feedback on the thing you're doing in a very, very intense and focused way. And I think that works all the way up and down the spectrum. It's this notion of it's one thing to study the concepts. It's another thing to put the concepts into motion. And I think the biggest miss when I reflect on you know, my school when I was you know, in school in the 1970s and 1980s is that there was very, very, very little opportunity to put the concepts into motion. You know, yeah, there was a lab for biology and we dissected a frog and the, yeah there was a lab for organic chemistry or chemistry or whatever we did and we made things explode but it was very limited and it was very limited often um, uh, to science right you got a little bit of it at least I got a little bit of it in English because you wrote a little bit and I'm a writer today. I write about a book a year, and I write. I have a daily habit of writing on my blog. And part of the reason I write daily is because I want to get better at writing. And the best way to get better at writing is to write a lot. And you know, if you write every day for ten years, you actually get better at it. I didn't write every day for ten years in school, and so even when I got to college, uh, or you know, in, in in high school, even when I got to college, I was a better writer than most of the people around because I liked to write and I wrote more. But I still was a crappy writer. <laughs> because I hadn't done it very much. You think about computer science education. Computer science education is not about learning uh, a programming language, although that's how much computer science, especially in high school, works. You learn Java, I think, now, or whatever you learn. It's writing software. It's totally different than learning a programming language and writing little things. And I learned how to write software not in my... We didn't even have an AP computer science class. I learned it vocationally by just sitting in front of a computer and hacking away. And then as a senior, I had a job working for a software company, and I wrote two products for them. And when I started writing software, I was not particularly good at it. Right? I wasn't organized. I didn't understand how to manage a project. I didn't understand how to deal with the specification. 
I didn't really understand how important it was to talk to users. You know, my code was probably terrible because I was sort of learning my way through it. But as I did it more, I very quickly got good. And that construct, again, there's lots of different things, but boiling that down, just doing against the backdrop of the construct of traditional education is so valuable. And I, I think that's, uh, that's the thing that when I look at uh, people who come out of uh, high school or come out of college that are able to go deep on trying something new and figuring it out, <laughs> um, almost vocationally in some ways, right? Like we're back to this sort of maker movement notion and this idea of people building things with physical stuff again. You know, it's the, the stuff that, you know, my, everybody's dad when I was a kid had a garage and there were tools and, you know, some kids were very good at making stuff out of wood and metal and others weren't and I wasn't. I was very, like, you know, you put a tool in my hand and there was blood that appeared pretty quickly after that. Um, you know, so the, the mechanical stuff I wasn't very good at, but the concepts around it I was quite good at understanding. And that's why I was much more interested in writing software is because my hands wouldn't bleed when I wrote software. But in a lot of ways, it's, it's the same. And so what's your natural aptitude? What do you like to do? And just because you like to work with, you know, wood and metal and physical stuff versus like to work with abstract concepts, they're the same if you do it, right? If you study woodworking, that's a lot different than if you actually take out a piece of wood and do something with it. And the first time you do something with it, or pottery, or whatever, right, as an artist, the first time you do something with it is going to suck. The 5,000th time you do something with it, it might be brilliant. Same concept.